Hello guys, welcome to H2O, the A to Z of Chemistry. I am Dr. Ritu Johar, your educator for this course. States of Matter. Today we begin with lecture 14 from the course, but make sure you watch the previous ones before doing this one. In the last lecture, what we learned was the Avogadro's law, which was the fourth gas law. We've already learned the Boyle's law, the Charles law, the Gay-Lussac law, and now the Avogadro's law also. And what you have learned in all these four laws is that we have four measurable properties of the gases that is pressure, volume, temperature, and the amount of the gas. And if we keep two of them constant, what we will be getting is the relationship between the other two. Uh, properties of the gases and in the Avogadro's law what you have learned is that volume of the gas is going to be directly proportional to the number of moles of the gas if the pressure and temperature they are constant right so now with this understanding with us today's lecture we are going to see a few numerical problems based on the Avogadro's law so the first question that we have today is that three flasks of equal volume, they contain CH4, carbon dioxide and chlorine gas respectively. They will contain equal number of molecules if the mass of all the gases is same. The mass of all the gases is same but the temperature is different. Temperature and pressure of all the flasks are same. The temperature and pressure and masses they are same in the flask. Now, what is given to us in the question is that we have equal volume for the three gases. And what we want is that these equal volumes, they should contain equal number of molecules. And what we have learned is that equal volumes of any gas will contain equal number of molecules if the temperature and pressure is going to be constant right so what we know from the Avogadro's law equal volumes of all gases under same conditions of temperature and pressure they contain equal number of molecules so here it is going to be C choice which is going to be correct and it is this question that gives us the definition or an understanding of what is Avogadro's law So the next question is, is the number of molecules in one mole of a gas at 100 degrees Celsius and 300 mm pressure equal to greater than or less than the Avogadro's number? So what we have is we have one mole of any gas at some specific temperature and pressure right and when it is going to be one mole of a gas you know now that it is going to always contain the Avogadro's number irrespective of the change in temperature or pressure right so the change in temperature or pressure this can change the volume of the gas but if it is one mole of a gas it is going to remain always one mole of a gas right and when it is going to be one mole this means that the number of molecules is also going to remain the same a gas can occupy as much as volume it is given to it but the amount of the gas if that is fixed if it is one mole it has to be the same number of molecules that is going to be equal to the Avogadro's constant the next question is that which of the following occupies maximum volume at NTP? The first choice is 6.02 into 10 power 22 molecules of carbon dioxide, 8 gram of oxygen, 17 gram of ammonia, 0.2 mole of N2. Now when we are given that we have NTP, so this means that the temperature and pressure they are constant. And when temperature and pressure they are constant, volume is going to be directly proportional to the number of moles of the gas that is accordance with the Avogadro's law. So now it is going to be your understanding of the mole concept which is going to be put into use, right? So for the first choice, what we have is that it is 6.02 into 10 power 22 molecules of carbon dioxide. This would have been 23, it would have been 1 mole. So this means that this value is going to be equal to 0.1 mole of carbon dioxide. The next we have is 8 gram of oxygen. So if you want to make it 
moles you will be dividing it by the molecular mass of oxygen 8 by 32 is going to be 1 by 4 that is going to be 0.25 moles of oxygen next we have is ammonia so 17 gram of ammonia the molecular mass is also 17 so 17 divided by 17 is going to give us 1 mole of ammonia Next we have is 0.2 mole of N2. So 0.2 is already even in moles. So now you can compare the moles whichever is going to be the maximum number of moles that is going to have the maximum volume at NTP. Right. So the number of uh, moles is going to be directly proportional to the volume. So what we will be having is that 17 gram of ammonia. This is going to occupy the maximum volume at NTP. So essentially now in these questions what you will be seeing is your understanding of the mole concept that is going to be put into test. The next question is that a tetraatomic gas occupies 1.4 liter at 0 degree Celsius and 75 centimeter pressure. Find the number of atoms in the gas. So now again what we know is that the temperature is 0 degree Celsius and the pressure is 76 centimeter right of mercury. So this means that this is a pressure of one atmosphere and when it is a pressure of one atmosphere temperature 0 degree Celsius 273. So this is STP and now what we know or STP is that it is one mole is going to occupy how much volume it is going to be 22.4 liters so when we are going to have 22.4 liters of the gas the number of molecules of the gas is going to be uh, equal to 6.02 into 10 power 23 molecules and then it is going to be the number of atoms it is going to be a tetraatomic gas so multiply that by 4 right so at 0 degree celsius 76 centimeter it is going to be one mole of a gas occupying 22.4 liters and one mole of the gas because it is a tetraatomic gas just multiply the avogadro's number that is going to be the number of molecules into 4 to get the number of atoms right so this is going to be the number of atoms 6.02 into 10 power 23 into 4 that is going to occupy a volume of 22.4 liters but what we want is to find the number of atoms in 1.4 liters of the gas so what are you going to do the number of atoms in 1.4 liter is going to be 1.4 divided by 22.4 into 6.02 into 10 power 23 into 4 so the answer that you will be getting is as 1.505 into 10 power 23 atoms right so it is essentially now your understanding of the mole concept along with your understanding of the relation that one mole at stp is going to occupy a volume of 22.4 liter just keep on associating these two and you are going to get your answers correct the next question we have is that equal masses of two gases a and b they are kept in two separate vessels at the same temperature and pressure if the ratio of the molecular weights of a and b is 2 is to 3 find the ratio of the volumes of the vessels so again it is same temperature and pressure so what are you going to apply you're going to apply the avogadro's law and for the avogadro's law equal volume is going to be equal number of moles so let the molecular weight of a and b because they are in the ratio of 2 is to 3 be 2m and 3m and because the gases a and b they have equal masses let us assume that the mass of each gas is w so what we will be finding out is the number of moles of each gas so the number of moles of a in w gram of the gas is going to be w over 2m right and the number of moles of b in w gram of ice is w by 3m so what is going to be the ratio of the number of moles of a and b it is going to be na by nb and you are going to substitute these value what you will be getting the ratio of the number of moles is 3 is to 2 now according to the avogadro's law as the the ratio of the number of moles is going to be equal to the ratio of the volumes of the two gases so we can say that the ratio of the volumes is also going to be equal to 3 is to 2 right so i hope this is simple easy just you have to understand the concept 
Now, the final question before I conclude this lecture is that 24 gram of a solid element, this requires 44.8 liters of oxygen at NTP for its complete conversion into a gaseous oxide. The gaseous oxide occupies a volume of 44.8 liters at NTP. What is the weight of the gas produced and what is its vapor density? Right? So now what we know from the Avogadro's law is that at NTP, the volume or one mole of any gas is going to be 22.4 liter. So here, if it is oxygen that is given to us, this means that 22.4 uh, liters of oxygen at NTP is going to be equal to one mole and one mole of oxygen is equal to 32 grams. Now, given to us is that what we require oxygen is 44.8 liters. So, 44.8 liters of oxygen at NTP is going to be equal to two mole, which is going to be equal to 64 grams. Now, uh, what the question says is that 24 gram of the solid element is going to use this volume of oxygen and get completely converted into the gaseous oxide. So, 24 gram of the solid element will combine with 64 gram of oxygen to get converted into the gaseous oxide. So, the weight of the gaseous oxide is going to be equal to 24 plus 64 that is going to be 88 gram. Now, this 88 grams of the gaseous oxide is occupying a volume of 44.8 liters at NTP. What is the volume that, uh, sorry, what is the mass that it is going to have when the volume is going to be 22.4? It is going to be divided by 2, right? So, the weight of 22.4 liter of the gaseous oxide is going to be 88 divided by 2, which is going to be equal to 44 gram. Now, we have this at NTP. So at NTP, 22.4 liter of any gas is going to be equal to 1 mole. So this means that 1 mole of this gaseous oxide is 44 grams. So this means that the molar mass of the gaseous oxide or the molecular weight of the gaseous oxide is going to be equal to 44 gram per mole. Right? I hope this is clear. So what we have is the weight of this gas is going to be 44 gram per mole. And if you want to find the vapor density of this gas, well vapor density is going to be molecular weight divided by 2. So the vapor density is going to be 22 right so i hope this is clear essentially it is going to be the utilization of just one concept that the molar volume of any gas at ntp is going to be 22.4 liters or the molar volume of the gases if the number of moles is going to be equal the volumes they are going to be equal so we are going to apply keep on applying those concepts to solve our questions related to the Avogadro's law. Practice many questions so that you are perfectly clear with your concepts and in case you have any problem, please you can post them always to me. So that would be all for this lecture and in the next lecture we are going to talk about the ideal gas equation which is going to be a combination of all the gas laws that we have studied. A very interesting lecture coming up. So in case you have not subscribed to the channel till now, please do that and also do click on the bell icon so that you get a notification the moment we put up the next lecture for you. Any doubts, once again, please do put them in the comment section. You can email them to us the mail id is h2chemistry at gmail.com. You can also join us on the Facebook page of the channel by the same name that is h2chemistry. There we keep on posting questions also for you from the previous year examination. So that is also a very good platform for you to discuss your problems and see more questions, practice more questions, participate along with so many other friends of yours into a very fruitful preparation of yours. So see you again. Have a nice day. God bless you.